Pippin Pharmaceuticals in association with Higher Secondary Principals Forum. A warm welcome to each and every one of you for economics class. I expect each and every student to have a notebook and stationery next to you in order to jot down the points which I'll be explaining. In today's class, students, you'll be studying an important chapter of economics, that is, introduction. Now, the first subtopic which you have to know is what is economics? Now, dear students, the word economics is derived from the ancient Greek word economia, which means management of a household. Two key terms which are important over here are the household and the management. All of us come from different households, different families. And what do we do at home? We have either parent, one parent or both the parents working, earning income and needs of a family are fulfilled. What are our wants? What are our needs? There are so many needs which have to be fulfilled with limited resources. And the resources for a family is the income, wages, salaries earned at the end of a month. So, the word economia means management of a household. How a household is satisfying their needs, unlimited needs with limited resources. Now, according to Professor Lionel Robbins, economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. Human behavior. How do we behave with respect to our unlimited needs, unlimited wants, and limited resources? And these resources have alternative uses. Let me explain to you, students. Human behavior with respect to unlimited ends. Human needs are unlimited, unending. They go on multiplying. If one need is satisfied, the next need arises. One want is satisfied, another want crops up. So, we face this problem. How to satisfy our unending needs? due to limited resources. Scarce means, means are the resources, money, income in hand. With the help of these resources, we have to satisfy our unending needs. And the resources have alternative uses. If I have rupees 10, with rupees 10 I can purchase so many things. So the resources have alternative uses. So according to Professor Lionel Robbins, economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce resources which have alternative uses. Next we have an important concept of microeconomics and macroeconomics. From the Goa board examination point of view, it's a question for two marks, one mark each. For microeconomics, one mark you have to know the concept of microeconomics, which studies economic relationship at an individual level, whereas macroeconomics studies economic relationship at the level of an economy as a whole. It is a study of aggregates. These two terms are very important. Let me explain to you the concept of microeconomics. When I study a problem faced by Mr. A, it is the concept of microeconomics. I'm studying only a particular individual. 
So my study is based on this particular individual, Mr. A. So that is the concept of microeconomics. Whereas in macroeconomics, I study many individuals, group of individuals. It's the study of aggregates. I'll give an example. When I study Mr. A and his income, one particular individual only, that is the concept of microeconomics. Whereas when I study different individuals earning their wages or salaries, that is the concept of macroeconomics. Now we have the problem of scarcity and choice. This concept of scarcity and choice is very important in order to satisfy our unlimited needs with our limited resources. As I've said earlier, students, human wants are unlimited. They're unending. We human beings are not satisfied with what we have. If one need is satisfied, another need arises. If that is satisfied, I need more and more and more of different goods. So we are never satisfied with what we have. So we say human wants are unlimited. But the resources, resources could be the factors of production, money, raw materials. These resources are limited and the resources have multiple uses. Let's take for an example land. Land is a resource. Land can be used for alternative purposes. We can use land for construction purpose. It is used for cultivating crops and so on and so forth. Likewise, labor, human resource. Human resource is employed as a teacher, artist, videographer, so on, so forth. So the resources have alternative uses, which results in an economic problem. Due to limited resources and unlimited needs, we all face this problem. And the problem is called an economic problem, the problem of choice. Since we have limited income in hand and unlimited needs, we have to make a choice. Which is the most important need? Which is the most urgent need? We cannot satisfy all the needs with our limited income. So you have to rank your needs. Which is the most important need which you have to satisfy first? So with your limited income, with your limited resources, you will satisfy the most important the most urgent want first and the least important need would be taken up later on. So we have this economic problem which is universal, which means the problem exists at the state level, the central level and at the world level. The state level, we have the state government. They have this problem of choice due to scarce resources and unlimited needs. Needs of different sections of people have to be satisfied with limited income, limited land, labor, capital. So at the state level, we have this problem called an economic problem. The central level, the central government, same problem. The basic cause is your limited resources and unlimited needs. And at a world level, all countries face this problem of economic problem of choice. So therefore, we say economic problem is universal, which is faced by an individual, state government, the central government, and the entire world. Now we take up the most important subtopic of our syllabus, the central problems of an economy. Now students, this is a three marks problem, the examination point of view. Three central problems which are to be answered by an individual, by the state, by the central government, 
or the world? Now, why we have to answer these three central problems? The simple reason of less resources, limited resources, and unlimited needs. So let's take up the first central problem of what to produce. With respect to what to produce, economy has to decide whether to produce consumer goods or agricultural goods. Now, consumer goods, we have food grains, tables, fans, laptops, books, or whether to produce capital goods, machinery, tractors, and so on. So economy has to also decide whether to produce agricultural goods or defense goods, because there are different types of goods which people require. So the first question is what to produce. Since we have limited resources, economy has to decide the type of goods to be produced. Since all goods cannot be produced by utilizing your limited resources. So the economy has to decide the type of goods to be produced. The second aspect over here is the quantity of goods to be produced. Once a decision is taken to produce a particular type of good, next we have to decide, the economy has to decide how much to produce for the simple reason of lack of resources, limited resources, the aspect of how much to produce is very important because economy cannot think of wasting resources. Land, labor, capital, enterprise are limited. So we cannot think of wasting our resources. So the first problem is what to produce and how much to produce in an economy. We take up the next central problem. How to produce? Once a decision is taken with respect to what to produce, the second question which is to be answered by individuals or the central government or the entire economy is how to produce. This question deals with the techniques of production. Students, there are different techniques of production in our economy. We have the labor intensive technology and we have the capital intensive technology. Now, labor intensive technology is that technique of production which employs more labor and less capital. I'll give an example, handloom industry. This industry which deals with manufacturing of fabric Labor intensive technology, I said handloom industry. More labor, more workers, and less machinery, less capital. Next technology which is to be adopted by an economy is capital intensive technology. It is that technology which employs more capital and less labor. Example, textile industry. In the manufacturing of fabric, manufacturing of cloth, we have the capital intensive technology which employs more machinery and less capital, less human resource. So the second central problem is how to produce, whether to employ more labor and less capital or to employ more capital and less of labor. Now, the third important question is for whom to produce? The goods which are to be produced in the economy, who is going to consume these goods? If the decision is taken to produce rice, wheat or vegetables. Now we come to the question of the distribution of the goods and services. Are we going to produce for the rich buyers or the poor buyers? Remember students, in an economy, we have different sections of society. We have categories of people. We have rich people. We have poor people. So the economy has to decide the distribution of goods among the different categories of people. And we have the public sector and the private sector. Now, 
The public sector is our government sector, and the private sector is controlled by private individuals whose main intention is to earn maximum profits. While the public sector, the motive is welfare maximization. So students, when it comes to the distribution of goods and services, public sector has to play an important role with respect to the distribution of the goods and services among all sections of society because the main aim, the motive of the public sector is social welfare. So students, these are the three central problems of an economy. What to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. So we have covered up the three central problems of an economy, what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. Now students, this is an important question. You have to learn it for the examination. It's a three marks question. Now let's take up the production possibility frontier. This is a five marks question. In this question, you have to answer the statement, the table, the diagram, and the explanation. The statement of the production possibility frontier, it is a curve showing alternative production possibilities of two goods with the given resources and the techniques of production. It's a curve. It shows alternative production possibilities of two goods. We assume that the producer is producing two goods, rice and wheat. And he is producing these two commodities with the given resources and the techniques of production. When we say given resources, we mean producer is aware of his resources. He knows how much labor, land is available to him, the quantity of land, the total number of workers available to him. So that is the meaning of given resources. And the techniques of production are constant. Now the producer is producing rice and wheat with the given techniques. Even if there is a change in technology, this producer will not switch to the latest techniques of production. He will stick to the technology which he started his production process. So the production possibility curve shows alternative production possibilities, which he is producing with the available resources and the techniques of production. Now students, the resources are assumed to be fully and efficiently utilized, which means the resources are not wasted. If producer has 10 workers, if he has employed 10 workers, 10 labor, then all 10 workers are gainfully employed in the production of rice or wheat or the combination of both the goods. And the techniques of production remain constant. He will not change the technology in the production process. Now we say the production possibility frontier is also known as transformation curve or production possibility line. Now we have the schedule. It's a tabular presentation of the possibilities and the two goods, the two commodities, which the producer can produce with his available resources. So we have the possibilities A, B, C, D, and E. Now if you take the possibility A students, you can see the 0 lakh tons of rice and 10 lakh tons of wheat. That means the available resources are utilized in the production of wheat only. 
There's no production of rice at all. You go to the second possibility. Now this producer has the possibility of producing combination B, possibility B, wherein the resources are divided in the production of rice as well as wheat. One lakh tons of rice and nine lakh tons of wheat are produced. So we see the resources are distributed in the production of two commodities, C and D. You can see here production of rice as well as production of wheat. Both the goods are produced by utilizing available resources. The last possibility we have possibility E wherein entire resources are utilized in the production of rice only. There is zero lactans of wheat. That means wheat is not produced. So we see the possibilities E, B, C, D and E which are available to the producer to produce. He can think of producing A or B or C, D or E by efficient use of resources. Now I will show you students how to draw the diagram with the help of this schedule or table. Now students, with the help of the schedule, let us draw a neat labeled diagram. We have the y-axis and the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have to represent wheat and on the x-axis I will represent the production of rice. Let's plot the points. One, two, three and four. It's so a production of rice in lakh tons. On the y-axis we plot the production of wheat in lakh tons. Now, you can see on the table different possibilities A, B, C, D and E. These po possibilities are to be represented in this diagram. So let's plot the first one, possibility A, which consists of 0 lakh tons of rice and 10 lakh tons of wheat. So we have 0 lakh tons of rice and 10 lakh tons of wheat. So we have Possibility A, 0 lakh tons of rice and 10 lakh tons of wheat. Next plot possibility B, which is 1 lakh tons of rice and 9 lakh tons of wheat. So we have 1 lakh tons of rice here and on the y-axis you have to see where is 9. Now 9 is between 8 and 10. So you plot your possibility B. Now let's complete the remaining possibilities C which contains 2 and 7, 2 lakh tons of rice and 7 lakh tons of wheat. So we have to plot this point C. Possibility D, 3 lakh tons of rice, 3 and 4 lakh tons of wheat. So we have possibility D. And last, we have possibility E, which is 4 and 0, 4 lakh tons of rice and 0 lakh tons of wheat. So we have possibility E. Now, let us join these points A, B, C, D and E. And we get a beautiful curve that is called production possibility curve. This curve is known as the production possibility curve. It shows the combination of two goods which the producer is producing with his entire resources and the given techniques of production. Now students, let's take a possibility which is inside the curve. Let's mark 1 lakh tons of rice and 4 lakh tons of wheat. 
let's name this point as possibility G. Now this possibility G, the producer can produce, but the resources are wasted. The resources are underemployed. Not all resources are utilized. So he can produce possibility G, but the resources are wasted. Likewise, any combination, any possibility outside the curve, let me mark point F. Point F, you can see it is outside the curve. Now this combination producer cannot produce because of lack of resources. He does not have sufficient resources to produce this particular combination. So is that clear students? We have the production possibility curve which shows the possibility of producing two goods with his available resources and the given techniques of production. Any possibility, any combination inside the curve, producer can produce attainable combinations, but resources are underemployed or wasted. And any possibility outside, the producer cannot reach that particular combination due to lack of resources. So students, this is your important subtopic production possibility frontier or transformation curve or transformation line. And now we take up the last subtopic of this particular chapter of unit one that is opportunity cost. Now students, this subtopic opportunity cost is a one mark question. Opportunity cost is also known as economic cost. It refers to the next best alternative, the next best option which we have sacrificed. Now I'll give an example. Let's say an individual has completed his graduation he has finished his BA in economics. There are various options in front of him. The first option could be taking up a job and earning 20,000 per month. The second alternative is to complete his post-graduation, master's in economics. Third option, the third alternative is to sit at home. Now let's say this individual has decided to complete his education to study masters in economics. Now, what he has done is, he has sacrificed the next best opportunity. The next best alternative for him was to take up a job and earn 20,000 per month. So, this individual has sacrificed the next best option, and that is called an opportunity cost of an individual. So students, today we have covered up chapter one of unit one in economics, that is introduction, wherein we studied the concept of microeconomics, macroeconomics, the central problems of an economy, the production possibility frontier, and the opportunity cost. Prudent scholars, powered by Lupin Pharmaceuticals